Did you know you can shortcut your client onboarding by using a couple of systems together to make things more automated and smooth? In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through my own client onboarding process using three tools. One is HoneyBook, which is a CRM. It helps you to invoice, send contracts, proposals, stay on track with any calendar appointments that you might have booked. So I use HoneyBook for all of my invoicing and proposals and contracts. And then I use ClickUp, which is tool number two, for all my project management for the clients. And then I use a tool in between. It's like the glue in this onboarding system. And that is Zapier to automate between the two tools. So I am walking you through in this video today how I set this up and how you can utilize the same system. Where we pick up in this tutorial video is actually with the client onboarding list and creating that onboarding form that you would send to your clients in HoneyBook. So there are a couple of things when you get started with the tutorial video. If you wanted to walk through it with me, then you may need to pause the video, create the thing, and then keep moving along. So feel free to rewatch it or pause and follow along as you can. But this is going to be really detailed in how you set up that client onboarding list with ClickUp and then putting that information between HoneyBook and ClickUp together. This video does not include Integromat, but that is also an option if you wish to use Integromat. I cannot speak to the options that are available with that tool though, with HoneyBook, but I can say that this works with Zapier, HoneyBook, and ClickUp. And bonus points, you don't necessarily have to be on the paid plan for Zapier to make this work. I wasn't on the paid plan for Zapier until January of this year when I upgraded for all the other reasons. Let's dive right on in. First things first, we actually need to set up ClickUp. So you're gonna want to come into your ClickUp and set up just a basic client onboarding list. Now I went ahead and archived all the tasks in here and I this is not the one I'm currently using. So I don't even have my form set up, but I wanted to show you exactly how this works. So you want a very basic client onboarding form or list with a to-do and a complete. And then you want to come in and click view and add a form. In this form, you are going to set up all of your onboarding information. So this will be whatever questions you want to send to your clients. You will simply add them in here. I would suggest adding the task name and then just change this to be full name. So when you send this to your client, they fill out the, their, their name in the task name. And then when the pat or the form is completed, it comes through with the client's name as the task name. And then from here, you're going to want to set up custom fields for whatever other information you need to add. So for example, um, what is your, uh, here, create a Google Drive folder and paste URL. You could actually set this up to be a website URL, but I just did it that way instead. And then some of our other common questions are like, um, are you currently running ads? And this, this onboarding form, you're going to want to create more than one depending on how many services you offer because not every client that you onboard is going to answer the same questions. So for my company, we have the mentorship, we have our organic Pinterest marketing, and we also have the ads management. So those three services alone all require different onboarding because those clients need different things. So are you currently running ads on another platform? So this would be my ads onboarding form. And then you would just simply add all of that information. You could even add like an upload files here. I typically, if I'm creating things like this, forms like this, I will make sure if my clients are at all confused about what I'm asking them to add a little text box ahead of it, but like a little description. So what I can do is go in here and add just a little text and say, um, yada, 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 whatever, and then add that in there. And then you can add that above whatever form 
whatever they're filling out. Now, if you wanna edit any of these forms or placeholders within your form, you can edit the field by clicking the three dots or you can delete them and start over. Now, from here, I actually like to have it redirect to a thank you page saying your form has been accepted. Thank you so much. I removed the ClickUp branding. All of my buttons are always black, but I just leave the text on that the same. And then as soon as this is completed and they hit that thank you page, that from there will be a calendar booking link on that thank you page so they can book a, ki a kickoff call if they choose to book one. Not all of our clients actually take us up on that offer, but sometimes they do. So once you have your onboarding form set up, you would click over to viewing and then from here you would copy your link. And this is the part in HoneyBook you would set up in the automation workflow. Let me show you what that looks like. Right now in my HoneyBook, I actually have it set up to where my onboarding forms are coming through HoneyBook, but I'm actually moving all of those over to ClickUp as I speak um, because it is it is a lot simpler. I've tested it out with one of my services and I've really liked it. So now I have to move all of the remainder over. So from here, <clears throat> inside of HoneyBook, you'll come into your automations and this is where you would set up the automation. Now, if you don't have all of your emails set up first, you'll need to do that. So we go to my templates and you would set up your email for the questionnaire. So we would have an email here and then we would have um, create it, name it, promoted, we're gonna name it promoted pins onboarding. Give it a subject line. I usually use the default ones from HoneyBook because they do work really well. So a few more details needed. And then I would go into the body of the email. And then I would say, fill out your onboarding form here. And then you would add that link in to the onboarding form. And then that's it. You would finish your email and get it all set up. Now all the changes are automatically saved. So from this point on, we're going to hop into automations. We're going to create a new automation because I don't want to edit anything I currently have going on. And we would add our action. So it would be send email. And then you would find the email that you just set up. And you would say, this is the email I want. If you want to preview and edit that particular one, you can. And then the when. So what action, what template, when to send it, zero days after um, contract is signed is typically when I do it. So I want them to actually sign and pay the contract before they get any onboarding information. And then click save. Now you can set it up to require approval, but that's just more work I have to do. And I don't want to have to do that. So beyond this, inside my automations, I actually have a post client feedback form set up to get feedback from my clients automatically. And I call it a post client feedback because not everyone likes to give testimonials, but they will give feedback. And in a lot of cases, the feedback is actually really positive. So that's what I call it. Anyways, use it if you want to use it. If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. So I'm going to name this promoted pins test just so we know. And we're going to click save. Now from here, because you have everything set up in HoneyBook, you have everything set up in ClickUp, I'm gonna show you my existing Zap. So from HoneyBook to ClickUp, this is my promoted pins onboarding for right now. And you could actually even set this up to all be in Zapier if you wanted to, but I just have this piece in here and then I know it'll Zap over. So. We have a new project booked in HoneyBook is the trigger and you need to connect your HoneyBook. If you've never done this, you will connect. It'll automatically prompt you to connect HoneyBook, connect ClickUp. So you will choose the trigger being new project booked in HoneyBook and then create a task in ClickUp. So when they when it creates that task, it's going to have you come in and tell it where you want all of this to go and what you want the name 
it to be. So the project type and the project name is typically what I choose. And this task, when it zaps over to ClickUp, is just for me to know that they have finished their onboarding in ClickUp. That's it, or not their onboarding in ClickUp, I apologize. This is just for me to know that they have finished their onboarding process in HoneyBook. That way I'm not constantly having to go and check HoneyBook. This prompts me to know that they have paid and signed to their contract and paid their invoice. And then I will be able to check ClickUp again and see that they have filled out their onboarding form. So this is the zap from HoneyBook to ClickUp. And then the HoneyBook automation will automatically, as soon as they finish their proposal, send the email for the onboarding piece. And then that will come into this board as well. So let me show you what that looks like. If we click viewing, we're just gonna fill this out. And then click submit and I will show you what this looks like. So right now it's just the onboarding thank you thing. I'm gonna set it up to be a third party URL. And you can see it comes through with a due date a couple of days from now and it assigns me. Now I have that automation actually set up inside of ClickUp as well. When a task is created to change the assignee to me and change the due date and I always put plus 48 hours because that's what I tell my clients. As soon as you finish your onboarding, I have 48 hours to begin your onboarding and get begin your project minus any weekends or holidays. And that's it. So I know from here, they have now filled out this information. It comes through as a custom task. They have inputted all the information, so I'm not having to copy and paste it from HoneyBook to ClickUp, and this saves so much time. It's all here. It makes my life so much easier, and this will also make your life so much easier too. Let me know in the comments down below if you have any questions. Now this tutorial is not simply tied to just HoneyBook. You could also use the same system with Dubsado. And I've actually used the same exact system with Dubsado until March of 2021. I was actually a Dubsado user for four years. So by all means, if you wanted to use this same tutorial and set this up with Dubsado, you definitely can. I still love Dubsado. I would still suggest Dubsado to people to use. However, I know I'll get comments about it asking if I use or would recommend Dubsado, and I do. It just got too convoluted for me to try and keep up with. There's too many things. It's like comparing Windows and Apple and the simplicity of one over the other. There are some feature loss when you move to HoneyBook, However, this video is not about reviews. It's not about whether one is better than the other. They're both sufficient CRM tools and you can use the same tutorial I just walked you through for both. Now, if you're wanting and if you liked this particular video about running your Pinterest VA business, leave me a comment down below and let me know what else you would like to learn. Because as I expand this channel in 2022, as I start talking about more things related to Pinterest or running a VA business, I want to make sure that I'm meeting you where you're at and you are getting what you need from me. So let me know what you want to learn. If you want more Pinterest marketing strategy, be sure to head on over here and watch those videos. Until next week, Bye.